some of you might have known, <clears throat> we had a few problems with our forge. So we're on with the new build. If you've seen the Insta, you'll see how wrecked the old one was. And what I shall do is insert, hopefully, some pictures. Could be anywhere. Don't know where they'll be. Might just be the full screen. Who knows? But we have 1400 degrees C, uh, the wrong type of refractory, basically. So we melted it, as you can see in these pictures, which you're looking through right now. Ooh, that's a bit strange, isn't it? Looking at something while I'm talking to you, there's a, a strange notion. So we've been busy. You can see we've got a box here, which we've cut up out of a few bits of an oil tank. We've got to say, we do love having a plasma cutter. Nice slot here for our ribbon burner. And what I'll do is, I'll bring you in a bit closer and show you what we've got. A couple of shots as we go, and then when we do get it running, I'll show you it running so you can have a, a look and a listen and get an idea of the scale of the thing. Cool. So, one shell, which is roughly 600 long and 500 wide. You can see what we've done is kept. The original shape so we can use our doors which are these ones here which is a bit of an old car ramp for the skin and then the new high temperature refractory which isn't going to melt so it'll be a lateral ribbon burner this time so we're not heating in a direct oxygen rich bit of the atmosphere which should make forge welding a bit easier and what we've got is some rather nice goodies. So we have, you can see there, 1700 degrees C, which is basically the highest stuff you get in a reflectable type rather than a transferring type of cast a bull refractory. This one we've already used a load of this, so it's not actually that much. Um, there's a high reflective paint which is zirconium silicate coating up to 1750 again it's reflective so that helps keep your radiant temperature going well and then because I discovered how quickly borax melts away the surface of the forge um, from the dribbles what we've got here is acid cast acid resistant concrete which is rated to about 1400 to 1450 degrees Celsius which should be enough really and then this is a two part so you actually mix it with the special binder that they give you and then down here somewhere you can see a nice big roll of 1250 degrees ceramic insulating blanket very similar to kale wool but Vic has his own special type, basically. So that's 50 mil thick, and I'll show you where that's meant to go. Right, quick transport in time. Now the box is all spragged up, and they are approximately 75 millimeter sprags. They're actually 80, 85, but it works out that the 75 millimeters by the time they've been, you know, sticking through stuff. So that will allow you to put the kale wool stuff, the ceramic blanket in, in a nice 50 mil layer, squeeze it in, holds it all in place for you. And then when we pack the castable refractory around that, you'll be able to stop it basically collapsing. And if you do get any cracks, then chunks aren't going to fall out. But I thought you might want to just see some of the pretty sounds that it makes it's a torture chamber I can call it that because you didn't hear how many times I kept twanging myself and making that noise whilst I was doing it so we'll take a little wander up to the smithy if you can hear in the background there's occasionally a jackhammer going off that's Carl busy with the other half of it so I'll take a quick peek at that and we'll go there now, so you can see we've taken the old floor line now, ready to replace it with 
the active resistance stuff, which is also reasonably hard wearing. So when you're dragging things in and out of it, it should be all right. Should. Should, being the key word. But we shall find out. And you're back in the room. So we've got our wool in place. You can see the sprag sticking through. And we have a couple of little bits still left to go. There's a little strip that will fit round here. I'm very careful where I stick my finger at this point in time. The chokey is bad enough without sticking one's finger on it. I'm trying to see depth through a camera screen. So you see that it will be about 50mm layer. The refractory obviously this is where the lateral ribbon burner sticks through. Still leaves you 50mm to your roof. She's struggling for depth there because you're looking through a screen. Well, that gives you a good idea of what it should look like. And three, two, one, sleep. And you're back in the room. Handy thing to do if you're mixing up refractory, make a little mold, stick your excess in there. So, cast, leveled. See all the air bubbles where we've tapped it gently so as not to settle the aggregates too much but release any air bubbles and that'll stop it <laughs> popping chunks at you because no one likes that so on to the next bit which is the big bit that i've already showed you so chokey. you'll see it the chokey yes <laughs> yes my child <laughs> and you're asleep Right, many, many, many stabbing wounds to the hand later. You'll see that this is all packed in nicely. That's the thickness there. As you can see, is about 50 mil. Ignore these top edges where it's a bit thin because what's going to happen next is it's going to go on there, sit inside. And then the bottom edges are going to be scalloped around so you've got a flat base, some nice radiuses to aid the flow of the burner. So it should just roll over and then where you think this is only 50, well 25, 30 mil, it's actually going to be about 50 mil, probably close to 200 mil in the corners where this edge will come up here. So we'll bring you back when it's on there. Benched sides are in. Now it's time to get to do this. Look, we are inside the forge. You can see there our benched sides. So now, if I twiddle this light a little bit, we can just make out. It's a nice round chamber. And that hole where the light is is where the ribbon burner is going. Just like that. So next time you see it, hopefully, it'll have a burner in it. Right, I thought I'd put the details of the actual burner in here for you as well. So this is the ribbon burner. And there are 13 holes from here to here by three. You know, a total of 39 jets. These aren't actually this big, they're just a little bit crumbled around the outside. They're 7mm diameter. And this is a massive burner. Because we don't do anything by halves, do we? And this is designed purely with forge welding billets of Damascus and long things in mind. So, what you've got is this main unit. Which is... Can use this broken tape. That's a foot across, 12 inches, and the casting body is five inches deep. Right, so inside of there, which I'll put some pictures on screen for you, 
it stops about here inside of there is the plate with the steel plate welded across with some jet holes in I think it's 110 mil across yeah so it's 100 mil inside diameter and like I say it's um, it stops about here you've got your jet holes in it and then inside this top part which I haven't got a picture of when it was actually fitted there is a stainless steel mesh uh, with 10 millimeter or 8 millimeter diameter holes in and that stops um, it just tunneling straight through and into your, your middle jets creates a bit of turbulence in there we like a bit of turbulence gives you a nice mix and it gives you a much more even spread uh, across the ribbons on the burner so this is two inch pipe and it's all just malleable fittings but I welded them together so you've got two inch bar pipe into an elbow gate valve on the end say so that's two inch bar malleable iron fittings and then you've got this section which is made this way for a reason because some of these fittings bulkhead fittings that fit through stuff are difficult to find basically so that's half inch or 12 millimeter steel pipe instead of copper and that's actually welded into the back of this and then it's got a normal olive fitting which I'll show you on the other side on the jet piece which is down here so that's all welded but it lets you screw this out and then basically what we did is in the end of this we plugged it up with a bit of weld and then drilled and tapped it to suit a M6 MIG welding torch tip which has been drilled out to 1.4 millimeters which is quite large but then again this is a large burner so that's why it's a large so it's 1.4 mil jet and this pipe extends past this elbow so it comes to about here make sure that you've got a nice swirling effect in here first for your air grabs that pushes it down into there so on the other side of this olive fitting we have this little piece covered in stuff on the floor because it hasn't been put back in yet so underneath of that section we've got a standard clip because anyone that knows with gas fittings everything's left hand thread so we just put a normal hose tail on this is an electric operated solenoid valve and then you've just got a T uh, ball valve and a normal olive fitting in the end of it so just in case you have a power cut you've walked away from the forge or anything like that and you lose the electricity for whatever reason that'll shut the gas off automatically for you that way you're not going to have no roaring flames everywhere and wondering what's gone on as well as that I performed a little modification inside of here and you might not be able to see it too well but You'll notice that this left hand wall now is almost flush. I decided to take a bit of the volume out of the forge because it just just a little bit too much unnecessary for my liking, I think. I might be able to get you in there. Let's have a little look. I can't quite get you in to have a look up. You can just see. So it's still benched. But now this wall hasn't got the big dip in it. It's basically level with the doors, where the doors sit. And it's all been painted now in a zirconium paint. Which is why it's all nice, nice looking. And the doors also painted. So hopefully this time, I'm telling the truth when I say, next time you see it, it'll have a ribbon burner in it. How long will that be? There we go, she's running. Pretty warm in there. You can't quite see the burner because the camera can't handle it, but she's on tick over at the minute. 7 psi. Flip the light on, you can see she's drying out. A few vent holes in the casing that stops your stuff from cracking as much. Let's the steam get out. See, there's a bit of 
condensation around the sides. It's mainly what's condensating off the ribbon burner body. So, jobs are good. At. You need to know any sizes or jets or whatever you might need. Hit us up on Instagram. Same name. Ask away. See you next time.